So thanks a lot for uh, coming to this podcast. So ma'am, before we proceed further, it will be very helpful if you can introduce yourself and your journey uh, till date and uh, how has your experience been so so we can proceed accordingly. Yeah. So yeah, okay. So I'm Himani. Um, I passed out from Niti um, long, long, long time back. <laughs> it's been 22 years now, but um, it's been a very, very interesting journey um, over the last 22 years. So from campus, I joined Dabur. Uh, and I was doing uh, supply planning activities over there for all of their businesses. From Dabur, I had a slightly short stint at Cadbury's. So I was there with them for two years. Mm -hmm. This was before Cadbury's was taken over by Mondelez. So it was still called Cadbury's India. From Cadbury's, I moved on to Castrol. And then I spent almost my next 13 years in Castrol uh, before I went to JNJ first in India and then in the Middle East. The unique aspect of my experience is that I've worked in all parts of supply chain, yes. right? So yeah. I started with planning. I moved on to logistics. Then I was handling a manufacturing unit for a period of time. Uh, then I also had um, a procurement stint. Yes. And, um, you know, then I had a regional stint and uh, stuff like that. So I have actually had operational roles in all parts of supply chain. And that's, that's a, it's, it's not very common. It's not very, and it was a very choiceful decision that I made. It was a choice that I made to actually get experience across because I was keen to really understand um, how all parts of supply chain really connect with each other. Right. Uh, and I think uh, all, all of these experiences have been very rewarding. Yes, yes, I'm sure, ma'am. And coming to the topic, like um, uh, this time I thought that, uh, with you on the podcast, it will be better. Like what you said that you have worked in almost all the verticals and the supply chain and people still feel that what is the relationship between procurement supply chain or planning supply chain or logistics supply chain. So if you can give information on that, what supply chain consists of and how these functions are interrelated, just for the understanding of the audience here. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So see, for me, supply chain is very simple. Supply chain is, you know, end to end. And that's how I see it. And which is why, you know, um, I deliberately chose supply chain, um, you know, all parts of supply chain to be in, um, you know, uh, whether it's pr procurement or sourcing or it's supply planning or logistics or, um, you know, even factory. All of this is a part of supply chain and they're all connected with each other. All of them have a role to play. Yeah. Sourcing will bring the product. Manufacturing will, you know, convert that product into finished goods. Correct. And logistics will make sure that that product goes to the right place at the right time. Correct. And planning is like an orchestrator of an orchestra. You know, he you like the conductor of the orchestra who's telling everybody, ki, you know, kaha pe kya karna hai, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of a thing. Ki abhi aapne ye banana hai, itni quantity mein banana hai, yahan bhejna hai, ye SKU hai, that kind of a thing. Correct. So, you know, planning is a bit like conductor of the orchestra. So, you know, we know Zubin Mehta, you know, we used to talk about him. Yes. <laughs> He's one of the famous uh, Indian, uh, you know, conductors of orchestra. So he, the planning is a bit like that, you know, and supply chain is like an orchestra and it will make music uh, when all of these things fall in line with each other. I agree. agree. And, and I think that is the difficult part, part also that everyone works yes. on the same alignment and and that is how this this function becomes very critical because it needs lots yes. of alignment and operational stuff to be done coming to specifically like procurement and supply chain uh, the, their relation with each other supporting the whole function and other teams so we have seen that some of the sectors or the companies they have a different procurement structure altogether they will have their chief procurement officer and some in some of the companies, we have seen that procurement is still a part of supply chain, that there will be a supply chain leader under whom the procurement will be there, planning will be there, other functions will be there. So any specific reason that uh, these functions in some structure are like not a part of supply chain and in some companies, they are a part of the supply chain. Agar aap ke sab se, if you can explain ki, kya reasons. Yeah. Ho to understand, yeah. So I think there are two main reasons um, why this happens. And of course, you know, uh, there could be many more, but I think my view is that there are, I think, two main reasons why this happens. Now, in some organizations and in some sectors, procurement is a much bigger part of the overall supply chain than it is in others. So, okay. for example, if you look at automotive sector, now automotive sector is all about procurement, right? You have to buy thousands of parts. And all of those parts need to be worked across, you know, a huge number of uh, suppliers. And then you need to bring them together to build a car or a scooter or anything else that you want to bring, right? Any other work, 
it's so it's buying so how well you buy and the quality of the purchase and the pricing of the purchase literally governs everything else that the supply chain does yeah so you know in automotive so, so it's it's a very different space with with let's say some other organizations where you are buying let's say food products or uh, oils or chemicals or packaging etc okay so the component or the complexity is very different um so i think that that's one important aspect as to okay. how what role sub, you know procurement really plays into your overall supply chain how big and complex and value add that is okay the second i would say is about the maturity of the supply chain in an organization now okay. imagine one supply chain officer managing you know four different parts which are very very uh, you know complex in its own way Okay. many a times the supply chains are not as mature for one person to be able to handle all of this together got it um, or being able to really work their way through each other okay so a lot of organizations start with different functions and okay. then when the maturity improves then they will bring them together so it's more like a journey rather than um, you know a decision the well, third thing i would say which is why i think procurement is important is because you know procurement is where maximum spend is right all the money is being spent over there and it needs a lot of governance and that's why many companies attach procurement to finance because okay. they believe that the governance and the financial discipline would be much much more if you uh, see it from a finance perspective vis-a-vis if you see it okay. from a supply chain perspective so you know it could be a mix of each of these or some part of it more than the other because okay. of which organizations take different decisions and again there is no one size fits up fits all approach and okay. also same organization might change their decision as well correct correct so you may have it may be that you have it together and then you decide to change it because you feel that you're not getting enough value from okay. procurement because it is not being given that much of effort and bandwidth because it needs a lot of effort or it could be the other way around that your supply chain is not mature but now it has become mature so let me bring procurement back into it and i've okay. seen both working and mm-hmm. they work phenomenally well in all organizations so i think no right or wrong answer about it it's about what fits the organization at that point in time okay i think ma'am you have brought a very important point i think it's new for me as well the second point where you mentioned that the maturity plays a key key role as well where sometimes the supply chains are not mature and then slowly slowly they learn they grow and then they feel that whether we have to keep it under one vertical or we have to keep it a different i think this is a new learning for me as well because i was not thinking from this angle i was mostly thinking from the angle where you mentioned first like uh, how critical the role is for procurement and the third where you mentioned about finance so ma'am also i think uh, important for us to know men in there that supply chain is a new function okay it's not very old uh, unlike marketing and finance which has been there for 100 200 years supply chain is a very new function you know mm-hmm. bringing together planning and you know logistics and all of this used to be earlier but pro- procurement is more it's much it's a more mature and older function which is why you see the concepts are so much more evolved in yeah. procurement than what they are in rest of supply chain where things are still evolving procurement yeah. i mean the uh, supply chain has been around only for about 30 or 35 years mm. it's very young function in that sense okay it's still maturing look at marketing you know you know 100 years i know when i started my career with dabur in supply chain i was the first management trainee and this is just 20 years back they oh. didn't have a supply chain function before that you know most of the companies did not okay okay so it's a, it's a new it's a new thing it's a new concept so i th- so ma'am i think here i think it will make a very good sense if i ask this question to you that like what you are saying now that 20 years back what was the situation so like in last 2 3 decades i'm sure you must have seen lots of changes like what you mentioned for procurement also but what ha- what's happening in other functions of supply chain so like primarily if if we consider few critical changes which have disrupted the whole vertical of supply chain or the different fun- sub functions according to you what changes happened in last 2 3 decades and how the things are shaping now in the supply chain side yeah so no i agree with you i think a lot a lot of things have changed you know i remember when i used to uh, when i started working um, you know and there 
things were generally more simpler. You know, you would need to make sure things reach from point A to point B. You need to make sure that your inventory is largely in control. You need to make sure that um, you know you're able to produce what you need. There were enough capacities on typical you know manufacturing setups and stuff like that. Then came the uh, time of efficiency. Okay. And there was a lot of pressure on efficiency. You know, you cut down on your inventory every day, every half a day of inventory was, you know, important for you to cut down on and get value out of cost reductions in logistics, cost efficiency, more efficiency, right? So there was a lot of time of efficiency. And now with pandemic, I think so much has changed, yes. right? Um, and now has the, the time has come where you, you just don't need to support growth but you also need to do efficiency. So now you need to do both, right? Earlier it was, you support growth, you know, you make sure things reach from point A to point B. Inventory was not such a big deal. Cost was not such a big deal. Then you say, okay, cut, 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 cut. And now how do you do both? Correct. correct. You need to support growth. So you need to give very high service levels, but yes. you still need to do it at a very competitive cost, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the difference. That's the evolution of supply chain that, uh, you know, we have to do and also with the pandemic comes the risk right how do you make your supply chain more resilient how do you make it more sustainable you know till five years back nobody talked about green supply chain or sustainability in supply chain it, it's an absolutely new thing it's just okay. come and you know five years back nobody even talked about it i'd never heard of it part till till then it was all about efficiency and effectiveness and you know things like that processes but now it's about you need to have a resident and now with pandemic came resilience yes I so do. you know now you need to balance about the number of hats that you need to wear as a supply chain leader and the number of things that you need to balance is way more and Correct. you need to do all of that and Correct. make sure that you're doing those um the balancing act by you know making those trade-offs knowingly what you're giving and what you're getting out of that depending on how the situation is correct so ma'am like uh, like rightly mentioned by you the growth part and the efficiency but and how the pandemic changed the whole canvas altogether uh, we, uh, for example this is what the growth is looking so i think more people will they would like to come into this field and we might see more attraction and uh, uh, from the candidates to get into this field means more talent coming into picture I think that is one of the critical pain points also recently after the pandemic, what happened. In terms of skill set, ma'am, if we talk about supply chain as a whole and the different functions, so I'll focus on procurement out of all the functions and supply chain part. Are there any specific skills which are different for supply chain as a whole and procurement? And what are the key skill sets which are commonly shared by both the functions in the field? to have a good career and to grow on a regular basis in terms of skills? So, um, yeah, so see, uh, procurement has very specific um, needs, uh, right? Uh, and and that's true for all parts of supply chain, you know, uh, but so much more so procurement. And we talked about that, that procurement is a more evolved function um, than, you know, the rest of supply chain. So procurement has some very strong concepts which have been, you know, uh, laid out by some really smart people and uh, you know if you use them well then you can become a very good procurement person um you know whether it is supply relationship negotiation category management strategic sourcing right uh, there are all of these skills and i think there is there's enough material um available to kind of understand that on the other part, uh, the rest of supply chain teams, um, you know, manufacturing people need to focus on productivity and efficiency right. and people and, you know, leadership, stuff like that. Um, then people who are in planning and logistics, again, you know, their, their, their skill sets are different. They need to look at, you know, how do you actually align all parts of supply chain, bring them together, you know, um, capacity planning, MRP, DRP, you know, you name it, the planning softwares and things like that. So I think there are specific um, needs which are there for each of the functions. Um, one thing that kind of stands out for me is that uh, for procurement, you know, the knowledge that you need to have as a procurement on your category is so much more important and uh, critical for you to be successful Correct. than what you are, let's say, in other parts of supply chain. So just to give you an example, 
if you need to buy cocoa for making chocolates you need to really kind of do a phd on cocoa category where you want to buy what you do who's growing which countries you know different kinds and varieties and stuff like that um but the guy who's doing logistics should not worry about whether he's sending perk or um you know um uh, dairy milk or anything else it's all chocolate right he doesn't need to really he or she doesn't need to really get into the category per se yes. um so you know it becomes more fungible it's much easier they don't need to get so much into the category aspect mm-hmm. uh the plan planning team does need to do a little bit so does manufacturing but it's not again as deep as i would say you know if they do it it's really great but yes. it's not it's not a deal breaker okay okay for right. them but somebody who's in procurement i think it's very very important that they understand the category very well how the category moves the second thing which i feel stands out for me from procurement is that they um they stakeholder largely outside the organization whereas for everybody else the stakeholders are largely inside the organization right if you see right. planning you know they are actually their stakeholder internal stakeholders are all sales marketing teams you know factories and stuff like that same with procurement same with sorry logistics except that logistics does deal a little bit with the vendors outside but it's still the depth of relationship is not as high it's more a transactional relationship in logistics compared to what you do in let's say procurement okay correct very few companies really invest in um long term relationships with logistics vendors it's relatively easier to change the you know the flexibility is more it doesn't happen as much in procurement so procurement in that sense is quite different but the general um there are some skills which are quite common and normal be expected you know um you need to keep the organization's objective in mind whenever yeah. you do something and you know uh, so everybody is needs to keep that you need to make sure that your stakeholders are working towards you know what your are aligned to the larger uh, strategy that you're operating with you need to be a people leader and make sure that your teams are well taken care of so you know some of those skills are generally quite common across everybody yes ma'am i agree to this the category part because uh, being a procurement person now i'm doing sourcing and the key thing which has played very well for me in terms of growth and helping my learning curve is how deep i went into that category understanding all the geopolitical aspects impacting it and then uh the small small things like the derivatives of that product from where they are procuring what is happening in that country and then seeing what is happening in the shipping industry whether we will get on time or not so like joining all the dots for that category and that you need to do for all the products you are handling so uh, the, on that angle i, I think I, you are 100% yeah, right yeah that's why you see in procurement you will often come across people who just bought one commodity for all of their life yes yes and and they will know and, everything and, and they do a phenomenally great job of it and i can tell you like in castrol we used to have you know we had base oil which is their most important raw material and there were people who just done base oil for 25 30 years yes and they were super good at it very very good but they could do it because you can really go into that category and you yes. can see how that category evolves over years correct and i think at some point of time it becomes so important uh, that person as a team member that if you are trying to forecast something the leadership has to understand something that person becomes the soul Um, yeah, um, yeah. because that's the intelligence that's the right. outside in perspective right. that's the outside in because typically what happens is the rest of the supply chain is mostly inside out right you mm-hmm. think of okay you know sales wants this marketing wants this this is this guy is wanting that finance wants this tender team wants this npr teams wants this right you're always focused on what is needed internally but procurement is very outside in correct ma'am So ma'am you currently are leading a very big function uh, you have worked across different verticals in a supply chain side you have been through that phase on a ground level also on strategic level also working with leaders you being a leader now you are handling lots of people in your journey if someone who is a part of any sub function of supply chain maybe planning logistics manufacturing or procurement and this person wants to become a supply chain leader in the future how easy or difficult it is and if it's difficult then a journal idea of how people can prepare themselves to become a supply chain leader like what you did like you worked in different functions 
so mm-hmm. was it it easy for you to do that or was it very difficult i i know that there will not be any formula as such but yeah a guidance from your side having worked right. that and uh, so how people can approach that thing if they want to become a supply chain leader so i think i think the first thing is we should understand that everybody doesn't want to be a supply chain leader okay i may just want to be a procurement person and i or i may just want to make a career in projects or planning and this is absolutely all right so right. um and you know in you know uh, we typically think when we start our career thinking oh i want to be supply chain but i can tell you that there are very very successful people who either done only procurement all their life or have only done planning all their life okay or have only done logistics all their life so they are all kinds of people and okay. they are also very very successful okay right so that's not the only thing that one should look at i think what you should look at if when you start your career maybe not initially in the career but maybe somewhere in the 8 to 10 year mark you should think of what are the options available and where your strengths are what you enjoy doing okay right and then decide do you want to focus on the width of supply chain or you want to focus on the depth of supply chain okay got it okay so for me it was width i always did well when i was managing a large portfolio of wider varieties i was multitasking i was my best those were my strengths okay and that's the reason why i built my i made these choices of doing things all across supply chain so that i could it will help me connect the dots Okay. when i started going deeper into specific areas i realized i'm not enjoying that as much okay. okay so that's an important aspect for everybody to ask themselves as to what they think is really their strength and how to leverage it and when you leverage your strength and you know this is a slightly different concept and i always tell this because you know every time if people tell you this is the your development need work on it but yes. nobody tells you to leverage your strength Yes. <laughs> yes right because sometimes they feel that it becomes over leveraged yeah mm-hmm. maybe but you know if you don't uh, use it then what is the point and everybody will have some weakness always no it's perfect right so Correct. if you fix one weakness something else will come there'll always be something so you know you, the option is that you keep closing those gaps or the other option is that you leverage what you have and i always tell everybody to leverage your strength and not you focus on your development needs of course i'm not saying don't do it that's also a must have but not do not neglect your strengths at the expense of that so find what is your strength and okay. leverage it now if your strength is width by all means go for all parts of supply chain and you need to get at least three of the four experiences to okay. be able to do that okay you to be to be really effective to be really good you know you can't just have done planning all your life and then become a supply chain leader and then realize that you don't know how factories run or you know stuff like that you should have at least had some exposure it's not mandatory because remember at that level you're not doing the work you're just asking the right question correct that is also the way i have to see it yeah correct so you're not you don't have to know everything but you should know enough to be able to ask the right question yeah makes sense Thank that's you. what leadership is all about Yes, yes. So, ma'am, अभी आपने एक बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट चीज बोली जो सब लोग ना कंफर्टेबल नहीं होते बात करने में भी बट आपने फॉर मी इट्स अ वेरी गुड टॉपिक टू डिस्कस बिकॉज टाइम्स आई ऑल्सो फील की ऐसा करना चाहिए वैसे आपने बोला कि इट्स नॉट इम्पोर्टेंट टू ऑलवेज बिकम अ सप्लाई चेन लीडर और एनी लीडर यू कैन एक्सेल इन वन वर्टिकल एंड यू कैन डू वेरी वेल लाइक यू नो पीपल एक्सेल एंड अदर साइड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू बिकम अप्लाई चेन लीडर यू आर वेरी गुड इन डूइंग दैट दैट इज ऑल्सो गुड नाउ द पीपल हु आर एट द सेम इयर्स ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस विद मी लाइक वी डू मल्टीपल डिस्कशन वेन वी मीट एंड नाउ वी आर एट दैट लेवल वी आर एवरी वन इज थिंकिंग वॉट वॉट टू डू नेक्स्ट लाइक डू आई वॉन्ट टू बिकम अ सप्लाई चेन लीडर और वॉन्ट टू एक्सेल इन वन फील्ड वेन वी टॉक अबाउट दिस थिंग डू वी रियली वॉन्ट टू बिकम अ सप्लाई चेन लीडर why not to do the same field where i am already doing very good so it becomes a point of as a confusion and thoda na log aise ho jate hai yaar agar main aise bolunga nahi na main supply chain leader banna chahta hu how people will perceive me ki yaar isko na kaam mm-hmm. karna ye na effort mm-hmm. nahi manna chahta so according to you is it a genuine problem like uh, most of the mid level uh, managers feel about that or aapne agar see it's it's okay i mean i would say it's absolutely okay to have these confusions you know these this this means that you're thinking right um okay. if you have confusion that means you've given that problem a certain amount of thought 
and you've looked at the pros and cons of both the situations and then you are kind of now trying to make a decision and i think that that's great there's absolutely nothing wrong about it i think the more important thing is that how do you get out of that confusion and you know what leads you out you know what is the path that you eventually choose to help you make that decision and or resolve that confusion and i would suggest the best would be to talk to lots of people who have done both the things okay and see what connects best with you and i'm going back to the same thing if you love what you do you will do it well there's no point in going and doing logistics if you're doing if you're miserable at it you don't enjoy it you don't like talking to waking up in the middle of the night and talking to the driver saying are tum kahan pahunche aur abhi kyun nahi mil raha hai aur usko main bolta hu abhi unload karne ke liye and things yes. like that you know it's a different it's a very different mindset when yes. you sit in procurement you sit on a negotiation it's a very different mindset so i think important is what resonates best with you and to find out what resonates best with you is if you really have lots of data points okay. talk to lots of people who have chosen to go the supply chain path talk to lots of people who have chosen just the procurement path and who spent 25 years in procurement and okay. see what back what, what worked for them when you have all of those data points then you connect them back and say okay what are my strengths okay. and if this is my strength then where it sits is it here or here or or here or somewhere in the middle and do i still have more time to make that decision or maybe you want to just take a chance and step out of your comfort zone and do something different and you may just excel in it and that's absolutely fine as well correct correct all that i'm saying is when that there is no right or wrong about this okay million people in supply chain million journeys to the top correct everyone has their own journey and everybody doesn't want to go to the top either correct <laughs> Correct. so people are just happy doing what they they've done you know all this time and that's okay as well it depends on what works for you because at some point in time you know right now you guys are young so you think about you know career some point in family will come into picture you know you need to manage dual careers your your career or your wife's career what is more important where will you take the chance at some point in time kids will come into picture and then you say oh my god i have to look at education so i can't be in manufacturing i can't be you know um sitting in some uh, village uh, in uh, you know some uh, very far corners of the country because you know there is no education or stuff like that sometimes parents come into consideration and you need to you know be a caretaker to your parents so remember that a decision needs to be made taking all of these into consideration it's not just about the data points of you know what's working and what's not working it's everything together so that's an important thing. and if you want to postpone your decision that's also okay no big deal so it's okay like to have this confusion at this point of time and uh, okay audience like it's not a concern you are figuring out what you said yeah yeah i mean it's not a big deal again i, I think it's good to have that confusion because that tells me that you're thinking as like i said earlier thank you for that uh, input it's very valuable input for people like me and the uh, people in the same same i think it's important to be mindful about this you know ki aapne deliberately wo choice kiya wo aapke sath ho nahi gaya you know it's yeah. a bit like that ki you know main procurement kar raha hu kar raha hu kar raha hu all of a sudden 25 years nikal gaye are main to kuch aur kiya hi nahi yes aise nahi hona chahiye you know you because you're still very successful and you should not regret that great experience that you have right Correct. but so you should be mindful about the decision making say okay i choose to become a chief procurement officer and that is i can tell you a super great place to be in it's a very very strong position very very successful people you know it's it's absolutely fine great great good 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 to know that and getting that perspective from you especially what you already covered but still touching that point that you as a supply chain leader you must have seen some lows in your careers where things were not that good in terms of maybe multiple uh, parameters like some performance issues not the pro- uh, project performance but like there were factors which were making things difficult for you or there were certain challenges which were not in your control but you had to control them which most of the supply chain people face in the industry like uh, you recently posted on linkedin about the procurement excellence part also then the shipping part also like where the truck is where the stop mm. is like that i think supply chain people go through this journey yeah, so yeah. you have to yeah, yeah. share two three instances 
where you had a very difficult experience, very different challenge. And but then it came out to be a very good learning for you. And according to you, this is something which most of the people will face in their journey. Absolutely. No, I, I agree with you. I think um, there have been lots of interesting experiences and a lot of difficult ones as well. And I can pick two, three from there. So, you know, we had this uh, in one of my uh, roles when I was leading logistics. I had this really big DC changeover okay. and, um, you know, I messed it up. I wouldn't okay. say I messed it up, but, you know, we chose the wrong vendor. We went through a long due diligence. We chose a vendor and then that vendor went bust from day one. On first day, we had 25 trucks waiting for detention. Oh. They could not unload them. They made very lots of promises, tall promises. We'll do this, we'll do that. And after, I think, six months, not even six months, I think we didn't even last six months. I think three or four months of working with that vendor, we realized that we will not be able to work with them. And we had to pull out and go to with L2. Oh. And then we literally built everything from scratch. It was a national DC, so it actually could have impacted service quite a lot. And we, we had to do a lot of things to kind of, you know... Uh, do away with that impact but dc changeover is going wrong i mean i have seen so many of those mm -hmm. it's been you know it's 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 very very common and we don't realize it but it happens all the time because we don't get that deeply involved to understand what's working what's not working what are the assumptions made and stuff like that so that was that was one big uh failure then uh one time you know we used to have these uh i fought service level and we used to measure it at uh, line level. Okay. Okay. So we were doing it at like 93, 94% and all. And then one fine day, they told us, sorry, you can't do it at line level. You have to do it at order level. Oh, okay. And all of a sudden, our I fought, which used to be 93%, came down to 48%. Yes, yes. <laughs> I can understand. Yeah, yeah, correct. Right. And then it took me next three years oh. to bring it back to 85%. And so much effort went into it. I had to take infrastructure changes. I changed the network. Uh, we created new DCs. We shut down other DCs. We changed the way we allocate inventory. We changed the way we hold inventory pattern. We changed everything. Okay. And then, but it still took us three years to re reach that level of 85%. But while it was there, and I had to explain every other week to the board as to why I'm only at 48% and they say, oh my God, Himani, we're only giving 48% service lower to our distributors. This is not okay. This is not acceptable. And every time I had to go and stand in front of the whole leadership and tell them what we are doing to improve it. But 48 to 85, that was a long journey. It took me three years. So um, that happens. Then um, one time when I was doing logistics in Castrol, we had this spate of accidents. Uh, you know, and Castrol, they do a lot of road safety work. And, you know, I was just coming out of my maternity leave. And I came back and I realized that on 1st of January, we had an accident. And, you know, kaise bolte hai ki pehle January ko jo hai, wo to aapka pura hai. So that <laughs> year was horrible for me. Okay. You know, I was a new mom. I just came back from maternity leave. I had a three-month-old baby at home. And uh, I, I had to put in like eight, ten hours at work. And everything that we did in the past... We did, and it did not work. Hmm. So, you know, what used to happen, pehle accidents were there, and we did actions, karte the, and accidents were coming, or were coming. But that year, we did all of those things, okay. and nothing happened. Then, we called all the contractors, and somebody said that they should do a prayer, and somebody said that they should do a prayer, and somebody said that they should do a prayer, and somebody said that they should do a prayer, and somebody said that they should do a prayer, and somebody said that they should do a prayer, and somebody said that they should do a prayer, and somebody said that they should do a prayer, and somebody said that they should do a prayer, Short term, medium term, long term actions, drivers, ke upar, contractors, ke upar, vehicles, ke upar, process, ke upar, and we created a complete grid of actions. And then one by one, we started working on those actions. It took us almost a year to turn it around. It must have been very dif difficult, I can. So it was very challenging. And uh, yeah, it was quite stressful. Every accident, I had to call up the VP supply chain global in the UK to explain to him as to why that accident happened. And what are we doing about it? And it was, I, the accident frequency was so high that I was literally having you new accidents every week. So imagine every week I was on a call explaining, oh my God, and he was like, you know, you're just giving bad news all the time. <laughs> and you, you know, this is you going all the way to the leadership. So, you know, um, those, those challenges are there and uh, these are real life challenges if these things happen and, uh, you know, you need to learn how to deal with it. 
and uh, you know I, but you know at the end of it now then i reflect upon those instances you know they gave me so much learning correct correct and, you know when i when I, what i learned from my road safety experience when i was in procurement i expl- i just did a copy paste on that to quality okay and you know we were having a lot of problem in packaging quality and i just picked up that same framework and i said okay let's do a quality intervention short medium long term actions cartons bottles correct. you know um drums pails we did all of that and it was super successful and it was much lesser effort correct i'm sure and i was able to you know get to that problem really fast because you know i had seen it correct, correct. so correct. i realized that this needs a much bigger intervention than just doing incremental action so i think your decision making capabilities improve quite a lot yes and like what you rightly mentioned that you get a framework also like you can do yes. Uh, changes in the framework and uh, utilize it and the point you mentioned ki sab galat ja raha hai to i remember one of my seniors he told me when i was uh, handling direct procurement that maninder ek murphy's law hai agar kuch galat gaya to sab galat jayega matlab jo sahi hai jo hoga wo bhi galat jayega and uh, supply chain person ko ready rehna chahiye us sabse so I can anticipate- which is why you know we talk about all this risk management and all that you need to anticipate what all can go wrong correct and be prepared for everything now whether it happens or not is your good luck i mean it's just a matter of chance but correct. risk management is such an important aspect of being a supply chain person ki which is why we do things like dual sourcing and you know triple sourcing or near shoring and all these concepts around resilience and all these jo ban raha hai it's all about risk management right how do you manage your risk how do you de-risk your supply chain basically correct thanks for sharing these realistic examples uh when we will move to the last section of our discussion today the key point jo bhi podcast mein we are covering all the realistic scenarios and your view points on that your experience everything at the end kafi logo aise hota hai ki mere ko supply chain mein jana hai to kya karna chahiye mere ko apart from studies matlab basic jo education unko leni hai बट वंस यू गेट इन टू एनी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन आपके स्किल्स आप पीपल स्किल्स स्टेक होल्डर मैनेजमेंट और कैसे आपको एंटिसिपेट करना है प्लानिंग कैसे करनी है काफी चीजें होती हैं जो आपको अच्छे से करनी पड़ती हैं मल्टीटास्किंग करना पड़ता है और जो न्यू लोग हैं जो एकदम एंटर कर रहे हैं ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में जहाँ फिर मिड लेवल के पहले के लोग हैं उनके लिए और ज्यादा क्रिटिकल हो जाता है कि वो कैसे अपने डेवलपमेंट करें उस पार्ट पे यू मस्ट बी हैंडलिंग लॉर्ड्स ऑफ पीपल आपने करियर ग्रोथ में काफी लोगों को एडवाइस किया होगा तो कुछ प्राइमरी थिंग्स जो आपके हिसाब से ध्यान में रखनी चाहिए लोगों को कि अगर वो इस उनको डिसाइड कर लिया कि उन्होंने सप्लाई चेन में जाना है देखो देयर आर सम मैं कहता हूं सम कॉमन प्रिंसिपल्स दैट दैट वर्क अक्रॉस एवरीबॉडी एंड आई थिंक दैट वुड कम अक्रॉस फॉर ऑल सप्लाई चेन पीपल एंड आई थिंक आई रेड इट समवेयर एंड इट रेजोनेटेड वेरी वेल विद मी कि व्हेन यू आर इन द फर्स्ट 10 इयर्स ऑफ योर करियर यू नो यू रियली नीड टू गो ऑपरेशनल वेरी ऑपरेशनल यू नो यू नीड टू गो deep 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 so you really understand ki nuts and bolts kaise chalte hain literally okay okay hai na once you've covered that stage and you've come to middle management level then now you've covered depth now you need to increase your geographical spread okay राइट right? पहले आप रीजन देखते थे तो आप कंट्री पे जाओगे कंट्री देखते थे तो रीजन देखोगे यू नो एस्पेक्ट देखोगे दैट काइंड ऑफ थिंग अगर आप ये यू नो ईस्ट वेस्ट नॉर्थ साउथ करके सो नेशनल रोल्स और यू नो समथिंग सिमिलर एंड जब आप टॉप मैनेजमेंट पे जाते हो तो देन यू हैव टू जस्ट वर्क अबाउट स्ट्रेटेजी एंड डायरेक्शन एंड ग्रोथ एंड हाउ कैन यू सपोर्ट एंड वट आर द केपेबिलिटी सो इट्स ऑल अबाउट केपेबिलिटीज डिवेलपिंग यू नाउ यू टन दर्थ एंड यू टन द डेप्थ नाउ इट्स ऑल अबाउट यू नो the vision and how do you kind of get there i would suggest ki jitne bhi supply chain mein jo log jana chahte hain i think important thing is ki dekho you have to learn okay and learning will only come from doing theek yeah. hai na so experience ka koi bhi aap jitni bhi marzi padhai kar lo and lot of people do all this you know mai bhi mba kar liya abhi mai cpm bhi karta hu abhi mai ye bhi kar leti hu mai wo kar leta hu ye wale certification le lo kitni marzi certification le lo jo aapko on hand experience milega na uska value alag hai and वो आप कहीं पे भी उसको कि कोई भी किताब आपको वो एक्सपीरियंस नहीं दे सकती दैट इज द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग आई थिंक यू हैव टू रियली गेट दैट एक्सपीरियंस ऑन हैंड बी एबल टू रियली एबल टू मैनेज दैट एंड यू नो डोंट वरी अबाउट डूइंग डर्टी वर्क यू नो वेयर हाउस जाना है फैक्ट्री में काम करना है ऑल दीज थिंग्स आर वैल्यूबल एक्सपीरियंस दैट विल होल्ड यू ट्रू फॉर यू नो दैट ग्रोथ दैट विल प्रोपेल इवेंचुअली Right. so um you know like i tell you when i went to factory for my stint and that was many many years back um 
I was I was working in the corporate office for many years, and then I was uh, told, okay, factory jana. I said yes, let me go. So a lot of people ask me, Himani, what are you doing? People go factory to corporate office. You go to corporate office to factory. Ja mm. So yeah, why are you taking a step back into your career? And I was like, no, that is not true. And I can tell you, Maninder, that factory stint still holds me stead because there are so few women who have done factory stint. You know, in supply chain, even very few men who've done factory stint. Okay. You know, so and that helped me because I planning, I have done factory, I have done logistics, I have done procurement, kiya. all of these things helped me make the career and get me the value. The you know, and I have um, with difficulties in each of these stints, I have been able to get that experience. So I think uska there is no two way out of it, and you should not shrug away from that. कि नहीं मुझे तो कॉर्पोरेट ऑफिस ही करना है जस्ट टेक वट एवर एक्सपीरियंस यू गेट एवरीथिंग इज वैल्यूबल दैट्स व्हाट आई वुड टेल यू इफ यू डू इट वेल एवरीथिंग इज वैल्यूबल टोटली एग्री करता हूं मतलब द थॉट प्रोसेस यू हैव शेयर्ड बिकॉज़ अकॉर्डिंग टू मी एवरीथिंग विल ब्रिंग वैल्यू टू योर पर्सपेक्टिव एंड इन सप्लाई चेन द रोल्स लाइक सप्लाई चेन इन अदर रोल्स आल्सो आई थिंक इट वुड बी सेम दीस एक्सपीरियंस आर गोइंग टू मेक यू अ गुड कंट्रीब्यूटर टू द टीम एज अ होल Uh, okay. because absolutely what i also learned on a shop floor in my first uh, job is something still i carry with me because when yes. i talk to someone to any supplier or maybe any stakeholder i can relate whether the comment being made on certain subject is coming from a ground level or it's just in the kya bolte hawa mein absolutely correct correct so that's why you know we were talking about that earlier ki you know when you become a leader it's all about asking the right question correct so these experiences help you ask the right question correct and i think ye bhi topic aisa hai ki jisme thoda hichkichahat rehti hai logo ko ki jaise aapne rightly bola ki maine mba kar liya hai i will take some certification i want to go to the corporate office wahi se i want to deal everything but when it comes to ki thoda dirty level log dirty level bolte but actually it's the real work jo shop floor pe hota hai ya warehouses mein ya ground level pe hota hai yeah yeah you have to do see you have to visit customer you have to visit factories you have to go to the warehouses and that's the first thing that i do every time i join a new company my first visit is always to the factories and the warehouses i want to see where where the work is actually happening right. if you don't have that then sitting in the corporate office you can't really make and understand ki bhai aapka touch and feel nahi aata hai product ka you don't realize ki kahan pe kaise move karta hai wahan pe jaoge to aapko you get you you will be curious right. you'll come to know 10 new things which you will help you in a lot of different ways करेक्ट एंड मैन समटाइम्स ये भी होता है कि लोग अगर वर्चुअली कनेक्ट कर रहे हैं फॉर एग्जांपल वन इज इन द प्लांट वन इज इन द कॉर्पोरेट दे माइट नॉट बी शेयरिंग रियल ऑल द रियल चैलेंजेस वेयर एज व्हेन यू विजिट द फैक्ट्री और द वेयर हाउसेस दे विल सिट विद यू टॉक टू यू कि यार एक्चुअल में ये प्रॉब्लम है सो यू गेट इनसाइड आल्सो यू गेट इनसाइड आल्सो सो यू हैव टू ट्रैवल यू हैव टू गेट आउट यू हैव टू विजिट फैक्ट्रीज यू हैव टू विजिट वेयर हाउसेस यू हैव टू स्पेंड टाइम वर्किंग विद द पीपल हु आर एक्चुअली मूविंग योर सप्लाई चेन आई थिंक मैम very well covered on this topic thanks a lot or uh, i hope you enjoyed this uh, discussion i enjoyed it absolutely i enjoyed our conversation thank really you, thank you ma'am and uh, looking forward to stay in touch with you and have more absolutely. discussions like that thank you so much ciao thank you ma'am